Yesterday, people were saying, I said, uh, I complained about the uh, granddads here, and someone said, you speak for yourself. And I thought, actually, yes, I'm one of the, the oldest, uh, one of the old, older users of tech. Um, so I thought I'll a, a, a little, reminisce a little bit. I found this book, Tech and Metafond, in 1983. And uh, I was writing my thesis at the time in Imperial College. Um, and someone told me about tech. I was very, very, uh, um, I really, presentation was very important to me, more than the content, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Probably how I part got my PhD. Um, and so I found, someone showed me TROF. So I was using TROF, which was great, came out. In those days, remember, there was no phototypes, no, sorry, no laser printers. No personal computers, n virtually no graphics. And uh, so I used TROF. And then someone somewhere said, I remember the guy, he said, oh, you should, there's something called tech. It's mathematically intelligent. Somehow this phrase sold it to me. I found this. And basically, clearly, this was the way. And at the time, you remember, uh, you, many of you know uh, Malcolm Clark. Um, he was at the computer center. He was the he was the one he was the one who in installed tech, uh, a, a early version of tech, and he and he was a, he was the support. He was the only one who knew if you had any questions, and I was the only user at Imperial College. There was, <laughs> there, was there were no users in, in, of tech, so even the, in, I was in the physics department. You know, ten stories of physics department. People were saying, "What are you doing?" You know, just type your thesis and then you write the equation by hand, which is what we all did. And um, so the story with Malcolm is whenever I had any trouble, problem, you can imagine this was a pre-installed, sorry, pre-release. It was very buggy. Um, and I used to go and queue up and wait for him to come back from lunch and, and just to ask him the question, you know, what, you know, what's happening here? That'll be a long wait. <laughs> <laughs> you know Malcolm well. <laughs> It's all your fault there. Um, so he'll come and say, yeah, I think it might be this, it might be that. And uh, I remember many years later, it must have been 10, 15 years later, I said, Malcolm, I really, I feel, I really should thank you after this. I owe you a, you know, a debt of gratitude. He says, why? So, well, if it wasn't for you, you know, I couldn't have written my my thesis, because you're the only one who could solve the problem. He says, no, 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 I should be thanking you. I said, why? He said, what you don't know is the only reason I had a job was because you were using tech. <laughs> so, so he was the computer support. If I hadn't been using tech, well, he didn't have a job. So, so I was quite happy after that. Um, I thought I'd pull up. I found my, my thesis, um, and this is a bad photocopy, but you can just about see... There was no, there were no computer modern uh, fonts. Somehow they'd installed times, and you can see all the space. If you look at the equation 220, the primes are. I'm sure I got the code right, but the prime is to the right. It doesn't quite match up. It was a lot of bugs in there, but somehow, somehow I, I was determined. I mean, there was no other way you could get equations like that in those days. This is your thesis, right? This is my thesis. Yes. Yes. Square roots, little dicey. Yeah, you're <laughs> absolutely right. Yes, yes. Square root's got a gap in it. Um, but, you know, much, much better than anything else. Um, the, and in the end, now, there were no laser printers. There was no screen preview. Yeah? <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> You were probably in your shorts when I was driving. So, so, Mr. Chairman, please, please, uh, please uh, 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 have some respect here. <laughs> um, so the only way, so what we did, there was no personal community. You, you went on a terminal. Only recently terminals had come, up, come in. So we would sit there, and you'd see the log file go by. And if there are no errors, Great. You don't know what you're getting. You submitted this, and you would 
go the next day, walk all the way to the computer center, which had something like 100 employees, um, and you'd get in your pigeonhole, you'd find a roll of photo typeset of paper with a plastic uh, sort of, uh, rubber band around it, and you'd open it, this big, like a, like a you know, paper, uh, wallpaper, and then you see all the margins are wrong. <laughs> because there's no, you got something wrong. Yeah? So you go back, try and fix it, and then the next morning. And this actually came, it was photo typeset, yeah, it was somewhere else, I can't remember. Anyway, it was an autologic typeset, typeset. It was quite painful to get through. In the end, there was no way of actually paginating. So I got a, basically the whole thing, each chapter was a galley. I cut it up with scalpel, cow gum, and paste it onto paper. So that's how we did that. Actually, the graphics, um, there was no interactive graphics, of course. So I, I had to do it using a com computer. So um, I did this. So that's a Tektronix 4014, Mr. Chairman. It's, a, it's, it's, it's like, a, it's, it's a, in those days, all the, gra all the terminals were vector. There was no, no raster. So all these lines are drawn with the electron beam that actually moves diagonally. <laughs> yeah. um, so I wrote a set of subroutines in Fortran to draw the illustration. So for example, you'd say, you know, and then I wrote this on a piece of paper, drew it, call arrow x1, y1, x2, y2, etc. And if you look at the X and, I just remembered, the Y and Z axis, all the axes, you can see they taper off a little bit. They don't suddenly stop. Yeah? I spent a year <laughs> doing this. I would finished my, it took a year to, to actually hand my thesis in. So the way this worked, these are actually, you see them on the screen. Now, how are they printed? You could either have a plotter. We had a plotter, which was a whole room of clean room, which we couldn't go in. You could look through the window. Huge plotter, but better that the, the output wasn't good enough for me. So the best output was microfilm. 35 millimeter microfilm, no sprockets. So you drew this on your on on the on you look at this on the Tektronix, then you submitted it. This would go to the university center. The next morning with a van, they'll bring everything and put it in your pigeonhole. You opened up this cardboard like 35 millimeter. Open this up, and each frame, like a 35 minute frame, was this image with an electron beam, and it was processed, you know, for the graphical process. And I'd go into the, into the when, when it was right, I'd go into the dark room, put this in an enlarger, project, and slosh about and, and process this and, and cut this up. And the thing I wanted to say was it was a fantastic device, you know, engineering wise. Um, you could draw a dot or draw a line, and you had 30 levels of gray. So the subroutine was, uh, you know, fade. I had a fade, and it would just slowly fade out. You know? And using that, I had, I had to draw these gradations. The only way in those days you can get this sort of gradation was if you buy, you could get from Letraset, you could buy these things with grade, grades on it, and you'd sort of, with these special pencils, Am I aging myself, Mr. Chairman? <laughs> anyway, I, I, thought, I thought I'd reminisce about this. And uh, anyway, it, it, I got my PhD what in What was the years? 86 is when I handed the thesis in, so we were 85 thereabouts. Yeah. Looks like both Mousepad is still on the left of South Bond. Is it? No. Okay. <coughs> it says a lot about uh, type it does. Work, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so if you look at um, um, HTML, HTML is getting more, you're getting more and more interactive things in HTML. HTML5, you roll over the mouse, things pop up everywhere. So if you go to a publisher's site, you'll see that the HTML is all, lots of things happening. But the PDF is flat. If you're lucky, you get some links. Hmm? Um, not much more. The thing is, a lot can be done. Layers, optical, optical, 
optional content groups in, 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 in PDF. Uh, JavaScript that's always been in, in PDF. You, you can do a lot with that. The reason it's not done is that it's difficult to do unless you're using tech. Yeah? If you're using tech, we can do a lot. And there are a lot of... Uh, um, uh, 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 a lot of packages that allow you. So this is the sort of thing that you get on HTML. Where you roll over and it's just, it's everywhere. Figure one gives you a little figure one. So what we want to do is to put these inside PDF. You can do that. And the sort of packages are, I mean, DP Store is the one who's done the most in this area. Lots of things. So OCGX, insert document level job, JavaScript, um, e-forms, pop-up menu, so you can put pop menus and forms and whatever you want. PDF comments, PDF comments um, yes, um, what's the other one? Um, uh, tool tips, fancy tool tips, yeah. Um, this is just examples, so if we go to, so just to show that the sort of things we're doing, so this, this is a proof. Uh, sorry, let me show you this one first. Yeah, this is a proof that goes to the author, right, after it's been typeset. Um, so all the, this is exactly the proof that you'd get when you, um, if, if you were to print it, except red means that the copy editor has changed something. So it's a bit like track changes. And if you roll your mouse over, you can see what it was before. Okay, that's just JavaScript. Yeah, so this is useful for sending to the author. The author can see what's changed. That's one useful thing. Uh, all if we roll over all the um, any citation, you get that citation. Right? Again, these are very. Everyone's really impressed because you can't do this with anything else. You, you know, if you go to uh, in design, there are pages and pages on the web that tell you how to do this. In the first, do this, then then click, then then after ten steps, you get a link, right? <laughs> well, here we can do that automatically, and you can do it with, with equations, you can do it with, with figures, etc. There must be a figure here somewhere. Um, so if I go to um, find, yeah, okay, let me. Why is it finding the same figure every time? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, table one. There we go. So, and each, this is, of course, this is typeset separately. So, it, so it, it can look, it can be smaller or bigger, or line names could be different. This again, this is something that um, you um, you don't find in 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 uh, other PDFs. So. Yeah, so figure two, if I wrote over figure two. Now, this figure is on the same page, but if it was on another page, it would be quite useful to have that. Yeah? In PDF, you click, you go somewhere, the magnifications change, you don't know where you are, it, and, and people don't like that. So that's one example. Um, if I go to show equations... Okay, this is another one where... Uh, you roll over and the same thing happens. But if you click it, then it sticks to the page. It keeps the, yeah, the layer scrolls with, the, with that. So we can keep both of these, and then I can close whichever one I want. So you can have several things open. You can have whatever open. And these are all layers. Yeah? So that's another. Does this work with another PDF viewer? Other than viewer? No, I'm afraid, as, as Boris uh, was saying, it, the only fully PDF compatible viewer is P Adobe PDF, Adobe Reader. So that depends on what is the PDF standard. If it's a moving standard, no. then you control it. No, but, but the PDF, 
uh, Adobe Reader is the only reader, is the only PDF viewer that will do everything that is in the PDF standard. Yeah, I think PDF layers are in the ISO standard right now, so it's uh, Adobe gave it to ISO. Yeah, some of them are moving, but at least it implement everything in ISO. It's one of our benchmark sites. Are you using Acrobat Pro here? Uh, yeah, I happen to be. Is it Acrobat Pro? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it just, I just happen to have... The lions are in Reader or not? Yeah. They are. Yeah. They are in Reader. Yeah. Um, so if I go to... Um, if I go to Reader... Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, sorry, that I have that as my default. Uh, just a couple of things here. So, from, uh, this is a good one. Um, if you, right, hands off the screen and look at the layers. So, we wrote the JavaScript. Often you have a black and white and you have color figures. You have to give to the publisher. One is for online. One. Now, you have, we have to check that these are exactly the same. So our lazy operators said, can we just sit there and look at it? So this just switches automatically between the two. Yeah. And then if you click it, it stops. Yeah. Now, most of the time, it's going to be fine. However, if you look at the top one, something went wrong there. And what went wrong? I mean, normally, you wouldn't catch that. because that would, But if you, a letter goes, for example, you wouldn't catch. What happened here, you see this bit, this bit there, which I'm pointing to, was, that was vector in the, uh, in the color version, right? It's vector, it's sitting on top, but it's vector with a transparent background. When you make a bitmap, according to the specs of the publisher, in the black and white, the, 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 the transparent becomes white and it hides what's behind it. Who would catch that? But you sit here having your coffee and you say, yeah, something wrong with that. Okay? So that's just another nice use. We can have three versions, but you know, we had CMYK, but that you get too confused. Um, finally, it's this, this thing which we called. Um, the self-modifying PDF. You find quite often publishers upload two uh, versions of the PDF, one for, one for screen, one for print, one for low res, one for high res, etc. Um, and so, because sometimes you might have a figure that's um, a figure that's it looks right in color. If you were to make it black and white, it, it's all washed out, so you need a different figure. So we thought, all right, why not have one, just one PDF that does everything? So we put a little menu here, right? So at the moment, this is for screen. Um, if I click on color printer, the RGB becomes CMYK, right? Now, you could just print it to your printer, but this can be more optimized. It's a better version. It's a controlled version. Or we say black and white printer. This becomes black and white. Your links, for example, they're all in color. When you print it, they all become gray. You don't want that. So we can optimize it. We can hide things, uh, whatever. Um, really, that's it. I just wanted to show those, those um, the things that you can do with, 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 with JavaScript and with um, layers. Could you change the page size? In, oh. When you no, because because you're you're hiding and showing layers here. What we've got it, this is very simple. We've got three layers. Okay, I'm hiding and showing. That's all I'm doing. And you see the color here changes. For example, we we can do whatever you 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 know you can imagine different things. Thank you. I take back what I said. That was great. Uh, there is a problem with uh, Adobe's encryption mm -hmm. of annotations. See, for example, if you find there's a feature called 
annotation in every thread. Mm -hmm. And that needs uh, to break the encryption and break it in a very code. So, and that's a feature it once worked. If, if the author wants to annotate a PDF, yeah. right? You've got to enable that feature. Yes, yes, absolutely. And yes, yes. you can't do that without using an after library. But if you do that, there was such an open source project called Reader and Enable, but it was pulled off from source code because they, they take action. Okay. So that's the that's bottleneck because authors have to annotate and they have to annotate. You mm. can't do it without using it. Okay, but these are not, these are final, I mean, for example, this is a final, it's not going to be annotated. That's a final publication. Yeah. Can we download some examples? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll upload, I can, I'll, I'll send you some. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Hmm. What a surprise, Boris. <laughs> yes, sir. Just, if I may, a quick comment. Yes. <laughs> uh, sometimes, actually, quite often, I think I know a lot about that and PDF. Then when it comes to that, and somebody from River Valley comes, and I understand that I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You know a bit more than I do, I think. So, so please. Uh... What is the debugging experience with JavaScript in PDF from tech? Sounds terrible. <laughs> I don't know is the answer because I'm not the program. I'm I'm the messenger. You get the, you get the nice results. I get yeah. I stand here and, and say what 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 our guys did. So I I know just enough to to stand up here and take the credit. Was this a significant development effort, in your view, or no. like an overnight hack? Or? They're all the, the, um, they're just ideas. All the, I mean, all, all the style files are there, the things that I listed. People have done that. VP Story is one of the main people. He's, he's, he's on CTAN. On CTAN, you'll find all this. It's, it's not, it's just having, really, it's just having an imagination to say, actually calling this a self-modifying PDF, which sounds a magical thing. <laughs> so all I'm doing is just hiding and showing this. But not on the tech list. No. Hmm. <laughs> you can store it up and on there, among other reasons. Uh, so let's say you've got a page which references 50 equations, and you've got all of those equations mm -hmm. in that page. Does mm -hmm. it reuse the content, or does it balloon the file size? It reuses the content, I believe. Mm. Yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Um, let's thank our final speaker.